I have in front of me um, something entitled Y2K, What Can You Do or What to Do from the California uh, Governor's Office of Emergency Services. And it's very interesting. They give the background of Y2K, suggest people begin preparations, talk about water storage, food storage, cooking, heating, refuse, medical uh, care. You just mentioned that. Uh, banking, communications, transportation, portable generators. I mean, they cover the whole thing. And so there are a lot of credible sources, including the U.S. Senate now, who are beginning to say things like the Americans should begin to take some prudent precautions uh, for Y2K. I, th <clears throat> I think that's a, a true key. I think my own approach to it uh, is not only in response to Y2K, but the, the implications for the, you know, the human community in general is that it is not a bad thing to necessarily have this type of preparedness for several reasons. One, um, there have been a number of different disasters that, that have hit already, uh, which I saw as sort of fulfillment of the Casey prophecy, such as the 89 quake in San Francisco. Right. Um, the uh, heavy quakes that had occurred in Los Angeles, and even such things as El Nino bringing in, um, you know, mudslides, et cetera, et cetera, all of which can uh, cripple any one of the, uh, the different communities. Kevin, you mentioned global warming. Yeah. Uh, there was a story airing on CNN over the weekend about Greenland, and they've been doing about a 10-year study on Greenland, and they are scared to death. The ice is retreating in Greenland, at a frightening rate, they have just determined. They checked it about 10 years ago, and then the year after that, and there was a little bit of a decrease, but then they just now checked it again, and the retreat of the ice in Greenland is frightening. It is because uh, these, this in particular goes into the uh, Edgar Casey prophecies, and even were things that Carl Sagan uh, had expressed concern about. So every now and then some of these two camps can come together and form a consensus. Every now and then. And uh, the bottom line is, is that I wish humanity had started acting on it uh, and taking it a lot seriouser, even, for instance, even as Edgar Casey began to speak about it, because we had identified trends in pollution as far as, uh, as early as the 50s, for instance, when the formal studies on smog began. And um, one of the keys is, is that people, for instance, who in Los Angeles were prepared when some of these wildfires hit and when the earthquakes hit. Mm -hmm. And people in particular say of religious values such as the Mormons, with the enormous stores of food and preparedness they had that when they did go off the grid system, which is a more common phenomenon than we acknowledge, yes. um, they weren't up there in the hills, you know, protecting themselves like uh, some group of survivalists or something. They immediately had the supplies to break out where they could help their neighbors and they could help cope with crisis mm -hmm. that uh, our government is encouraging us to have this kind of preparedness, which is, in my opinion, the more humane approach to this entire process. I have never, during my lifetime, heard our government officially tell Americans to prepare by storing food or whatever it is they're saying American people should be doing right now. I've never heard that. Now, I'm sure during the war there were such proclamations, but I was born just after the Second World War, so I've never heard that from our government. Uh, it's it's more it's more localized, quite frankly, in communities that you know take the brunt of these things all the time: uh, earthquake preparedness, hurricane preparedness, and there's they have never developed a national policy, with the exception of FEMA, which unfortunately is more like a paramilitary solution. <laughs> and um, you know, this retreat of the ice is it's one of the key signs. It it, re it really puts uh, such things as Europe, uh, other coastal cities, et cetera, et cetera, in in jeopardy. And when you have things like El Nino or when you have things like these extraordinary rainfalls where virtually the entire Mississippi uh, River had reversed its course uh, because it couldn't handle the swelling of its uh, tributaries, including the Ohio River, which uh, I'm indigenous to Ohio, um, was absolutely extraordinary. And once again, uh, as a nation, we're able to recoup, we're able to recover. But it, I just find it extraordinary that with this kind of unfoldment and these kinds of climate changes, that just community preparedness um, on a universal standard and universal basis, which we know can be so helpful one, when nature does become chaotic and we happen to be in the way of it. Okay, well, that, that appears to be what's occurring right now. Nature appears to be getting chaotic. Uh, the jet stream 
I read a, another uh, little piece yesterday about the jet stream virtually touching the ground. They've had some incredible winds, um, which can only be accounted for, according to the weather people, by the jet stream virtually touching ground. And that's not all. We've got birds flying north that should be flying south. We've got birds dropping dead. We've got birds with deformities, frogs with deformities. We've got school children down in Australia who are required by law to wear hats because of the amount of um, ultraviolet radiation, because of the ozone hole. We've got a lot going on with the environment that is not good. I said this on Larry King the other day, and I've said it on my program, Kevin. In the old days of a piston engine aircraft that crossed the Pacific, about halfway across the Pacific, because of the amount of fuel they would carry, a little red light would come on that would say, point of no return. That was in the old High and Mighty with John Wayne. And in my opinion, humanity's little red light came on a while ago. I mean, that means that you cannot go back. You're only going to go forward to your desti destination or you're going in the water, one of the two. But you're not going back to California. And I think that humanity's little red light came on a while ago, point of no return. So the world is not going to end, but I think we're headed for some kind of a change. And I'm not even an intuitive. Well, um, <clears throat> I think that many intuitives can, uh, can agree with the, with the position that what it is is that humanity uh, cannot go on um, in the manner that it has. And the idea that the little red light comes on uh, is, is an intriguing metaphor. Um, Carl Jung, um, who underwent a personal transformation by out-of-body experience, by the way, and it became a real core in his psychology, mm -hmm. used to monitor the dreams of his uh, patients. And um, in them suddenly began to appear uh, extraordinary visions of, a, of some type of global catastrophe that eventually he felt that the world had reached a point where the phenomena that came to be known as World War II uh, was something that humanity had almost chosen to impose upon itself, although it, it had opportunities, if you will, for a sea change or a course correction. His final contributions uh, to the field uh, were twofold. One, he began to examine uh, the phenomena of uh, UFO sightings mm -hmm. uh, when they were first beginning to occur in the modern era around uh, between 47 and 49 at Mount Rainier. And he felt that that was hopeful in that as people have those types of visions, it's as though humanity's consciousness is reaching out and trying to come uh, full circle in, the, in that we are reaching another level in our conscious evolution. Yahweh also issued a cautionary note saying that there will come a time when humanity will have to face a crisis that supersedes even the destructiveness of war. This will probably be a crisis that will occur in the ecology that humanity's actions are accountable for, and that perhaps the thing that is hopeful in that is that it may very well be the moment in which humanity will finally be united. Well, I, I think, Kevin, we're kind of like the lobster in the slowly heating water, and only some now are realizing, damn, this water is getting hot. Uh, <laughs> but the